Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Got a viewer letter today from Leonard, and Leonard is wanting to do something that is absolutely a lot of fun. It's also dangerous, and it's something I really don't recommend you do, but people are going to do it anyway, and I hate to be a killjoy. I'm kind of a safety Nazi, but every year in this area, you hear of someone injured or killed on a hayride. Hay rides are tremendous amounts of fun if you're young, you're out there on the bales in the dark with your girlfriend, ooh, snuggling up, it's cold and all of that, but there's always somebody gets hurt every year on a hay ride. And so you're going to do them. I'm going to give you six thoughts today to try to keep safe. But let's talk about Leonard first. Leonard writes, Mike, my wife and I retired and moved out to the country three years ago. We bought a tractor and a trailer to haul it with. We have invited our church to come out for a day on the farm later in October and thought it might be fun to have a hayride. Is there anything I need to know before hooking up the tractor to the trailer, getting some hay bales, and letting everybody ride? I want it to be safe. Well, Leonard, you're doing the right thing. If you're bound and determined to have a hayride, it's important to think about safety before you start. And I'm going to give you six things today that will help get it as safe as it can be. First thing I want to talk about is your insurance, is your liability insurance. I'd call my insurance agent, and I'd also tell the church, you need to check, you know, they probably got insurance on events like that, some kind of a blanket thing that covers stuff like that. But let's get that covered first so, so we're not in a liability situation. Make sure if your insurance company has rules about that, you follow them. Make sure the church knows they need to have insurance on this event. And that's number one, to keep you out of trouble. Number two, one thing I found about hay rides is a lot of times... Somebody will give you an opportunity if you're the tractor driver. Oh, wouldn't you like to ride on this one? And they'll take over driving. If you've got anybody else that runs your tractor, make sure they're an experienced operator. I can tell you from personal experience, I've run hay rides before and let the person after me drive the tractor. And they may have told you they grew up around tractors, but there's a big difference between growing up around tractors and actually operating tractors. And I've seen some people run hay rides that scared me a little bit and how much they knew about tractors. In an emergency situation, you need to know how to get that thing stopped and, and, and avoid as much danger as you can. And if you're a novice operator, that could be a problem. And Leonard, I need you to analyze what your experience with a tractor. If you've only owned a tractor for a couple of years and you didn't grow up on a farm operating tractors, are you really comfortable with your skills before you start running people out in the field on a hay bale. That's number two. Number three thing I want to talk about that's important is how is that trailer attached to the tractor? Now if it's a gooseneck trailer, there's usually about only one way you can hook that thing up to a tractor and that's a mechanism like this. With a gooseneck ball on the top of it, it hooks to the three point. If it's a pull type trailer, you might be able to put it on the drawbar, and if you can, put a ball through that drawbar, hook it to the drawbar, and I'll tell you why. With the three-point up high, the weight of the trailer is trying to lift the front of the tractor off the ground. Now, if you've got a front-end loader, this is not that much of an issue. If it's a heavier tractor, it may not be that much of an issue, but if it's a smaller tractor that's kind of light, and you get a bunch of people on the back, and we'll talk about that in a minute, it can lift everything up and you need your front end on the ground for steering and also because if you're given a hay ride and you're not on pavement you need to have that tractor in four wheel drive and those front wheels can help you stop if you're in four wheel drive in a low gear so how you hook it up is important the best way to hook it up is to hook it to the draw bar if it's a bumper pull trailer but if it's a gooseneck you're stuck with one of these uh, mechanisms that go on the three point and you want to keep that as low as possible. But understand where that hooks on the tractor is up higher than where the drawbar is. So that creates a little bit of a concern for me on all the weight distribution and how the front wheels stay on the ground. Now the number four thing I want to talk about today is where you're going with this hayride. 
We've got a long driveway and we could go up and down the driveway and that would be a fairly fun hayride. I don't like going out on the open road with hayrides. That could be really dangerous because then you've got to contend with traffic and if, especially if it's at night, uh, people seeing you. If you decide to keep it on your place and go around the perimeter of the place, uh, is it hilly? Is the grass going to be wet? If we're doing it at night and there's a heavy dew and you're going down a hill, uh, that can be a problem. And one thing you want to remember, you get a bunch of hay bales on a trailer and you get a whole bunch of people on that trailer with kids in their lap and all of that cr crunched together. That's a gob of weight. And if you've got a subcompact tractor or even a larger compact tractor going down a hill on wet grass, you can get out of control really quickly, and we don't want that. If you're sliding on that hill with all those people pushing you, that could end in tragedy. So calculate how much weight you'll have and match that weight to the appropriate tractor. And if, again, you're going out on the little bit of a slope, make sure your tractor's in four-wheel drive because that'll help you stay safe, help you stop if there's an emergency. But definitely have enough tractor on the front of the trailer so you don't get in a bad situation and, and keep that in mind where you go. Now the number five thing that's really important and I see this lacking in a lot of hay rides. I like to have adults on the trailer in communication with me the tractor driver through some method other than screaming at each other because tractors are loud it's hard to hear. So I want a, at least a couple of adults and preferably one at each corner of the trailer on the hayride whose only job is to monitor whether people are on or off or if you're ready to move. And if you've got walkie-talkies or your cell phone where you're in constant contact and everybody says, yeah, we're all loaded, we can go now, and they're watching to make sure no one else is running to jump on the trailer, uh, that, that really helps out the safety. But just having people willy-nilly getting off the trailer, it's real hard to see back on the trailer behind the wheels and in front of the wheels and you can run over somebody there could be a, a you know a small toddler that's fallen off the tractor and I know from experience I fell off a pretty good sized trailer when I was a kid and my dad ran over me didn't hurt me but it could have because nobody was watching to see if I was on the trailer so have adults on the trailer watching the progress of everybody making sure there's not people under the wheels or people running on the trailer at the last minute in contact with you via cell phone or walkie-talkie. The last thing today that'll keep a hayride safe, and this is probably the most important thing, is lighting. I'll never forget a few years ago, I was coming home from Walmart and I crested a hill just as you're coming out of a neighborhood that we have to drive through to get to town. And there, right on the side of the road, was a truck pulling a trailer with no rear lights and a whole bunch of adults and kids trick-or-treating on the back of that trailer. There were no lights on the back of the trailer. They either weren't plugged in or they didn't work and I almost hit them. The lights of the pickup truck were blocked by the adults on the hay bales on the back. So I, I couldn't see it was there and I mean I almost hit them. And it made me realize how important lighting is. If you're pulling a hayride with a truck, make sure the rear lights work and make sure you have some way of seeing what's going on behind you on that trailer. If you're pulling it with a tractor, you may need supplemental lights and we'll talk about a way to get them here in just a second. And if you're hauling the tractor on the open road on a hayride or any time, it's nice to have a beacon to let other vehicles know you're there. We'll talk about a product that'll help you get that here in just a second. The other thing you need to be able to do is see in front of you. If you've got a cab tractor, cab tractors are great for lighting. They've got a row of lights up at the top usually and a row of lights in the back and you can light up the whole sky and see everything you're doing. On a tractor without a cab, you don't have that. Most of the time, a tractor without a cab has got lights in the grill and they shine right into the loader bucket. And so you can't see 10 feet in front of you. I've got a way of remedying that right now too. Let's go over here to our table. We'll unbox a couple of products that are available on my website that will help remedy the lighting issue with hay rides or with taking a tractor on the open road. Let's get started. Well, this is the newest product on my website. And it's one I'm really, really excited about because there's so many uses for it, not just tractors. It's called the Country Road Light Kit.
and it consists of several products here together. Two LED safety lights that are white and two LED amber lights and then a beacon. And the beacon goes up on the roll bar. Let's talk about it first. If you're out on the open road, and these are all powered by batteries. You need batteries, double A batteries. And they all have magnets on them, so they'll fit on any metal sur surface on the tractor. But this beacon, to get into it, just unscrew it. And there's where the batteries go. Takes four AA batteries. So when you're going down the road, you just turn this on. And drive. It'll really help other vehicles see you. That's part of the kit. The other part of the kit are, like I said, two white and two amber lights. And they have two functions each. Here's the white light. There's a little screw in the back to get the uh, battery in, and you don't have to take it all the way out, just loosen it couple of three turns. It kind of keeps everything together. And you notice there's magnets on the back of this to keep it wherever you put it. But just release that keeper screw, turn it till it's loose, and then you can pop off the back. And the, that came out. You don't have to take it out. Then it takes four batteries. Clip the back on and put the screw in so that doesn't fall off. It's kind of like I said, it's kind of a keeper. Now this has two functions. Push it once and it's a flashing light. Push it twice and it's a solid light. So if you're wanting to go down the road and have people notice you or you want to see where you're going, have that on that. If you're wanting people to really see you, have it flash. That aims toward the front of the tractor. These amber lights go the other way. Now for some reason, the amber lights have a bigger magnet on them. I'm not sure why yet, but they just do. And watch this. Push it once, it flashes. Twice, it's solid. Now I'm going to use these products in other applications rather than just on my tractor. When I'm going somewhere pulling a horse trailer or my boat or anything like this with my truck after dark, I'm going to have these in there. Because if I'd have to have a flat tire, I could put this on the back of the truck to divert other vehicles around me. And I could use this either for the same purpose or probably to see. And if you're doing a hayride, put this on the back to alert other people coming, and then put this on the trailer somewhere so you can see what's going on behind you. Love this kit. Again, you get two amber lights, two white lights, strobe light, the Country Road Flashing Light Kit. The other kit I want to show today is the RBI Tractor Light Kit. You may have already seen this. It comes from the same folks. It is a really simple way to make a roll bar equipped tractor have visibility forward. And it couldn't be simpler. What you have is a light that you pull out of the box. Put that underneath the roll bar with these magnets. Plug it in to this switch that goes on the side of your roll bar. Also has a magnet. 
and then run this wire to your battery and you've got lights on your tractor that don't shine into the loader bucket and blind you. It's a really nice way and a simple way right out of the box of having better visibility on a tractor after dark. It's the RBI Roll Bar Illumination Tractor Light. If you'd like to purchase either one of these products, go to my website and the Tractor Fun Store right here. You'll find a lot of unique items there for sale for the tractor owner that helps support my channel. And if you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would be honored. Just click right here. Thanks for watching.